Welcome back, everyone, to Hoi 4, China, Millennium Dawn, all these kinds of glorious things. And the Kenyans want money! <laughs> Look at that, we have $53 billion! Uh, I'm not sure why the, 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 the Bernie Sanders. Um, let's do the Bernie, the, 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 not the Bernie, the, the Donald Trump. We have $53 billion, billion dollars. And they asked for 52 billion dollars. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grant them the bailout. That's some pretty good influence right there. 49%. Oh, and we, we are doing more memes, by the way. Uh, my friends, my friends, uh, comrades and friends, uh, which is incidentally how. Uh, excuse me? How? How? What? Oh! <laughs> that didn't even tell me! <laughs> See, I'm just, <laughs> See, I'm just like... <laughs> See, I just, I'm just clicking on Was State to show that I puppeted Was State. <laughs> Unfortunately, they lost their cool, like insanely cool... Um, leader with the, the KMT like uh, army hat from 1945 in uh, 2008 um, but whatever anyway we were getting the dialogue with the Taiwanese but <laughs> okay so the, the Myanmar over here <laughs> the Myanmar over which we have over who we have fucking 391 influence which is 74 percent of total unfortunately the Myanmarese do not motherfucking have um, emerging outlook, which is just a big sad, boys. It's just a real, bi real big sad. Oh, they're bankrupt. The Myanmarese. is. Why didn't you? Oh, yeah, they, they did ask me for a bailout at one point. It looks like the bailout wasn't enough, um, and now they've joined the Shanghai Pact, which is pretty fucking hilarious because now they're allies with the country that has literally like carved out a piece of their of their land and made them like a, a fucking puppet state out of it i don't understand Ooh, the Myanmarese also almost have enough to puppet the kachin state so basically the only thing that's left to the well almost reunification of uh, myanmar uh, would be the karen state uh, which is very very heavily influenced by uh, the old usa Anyway, I was doing even more things. So we, we yeah, we managed to puppet the Wa state thanks to um, some weird uh, nonsense that was happening, and they they you know went bankrupt, and I had bailed them out, and you know it gave me a whole bunch of influence. I also uh, got a, a bailout on Cambodia, uh, but however, they elected in their elections they elected the non-aligned outlook, the Cambodian National Sustaining Party. And so now I have to do big brain. I need to I need to do a coup. I am boosting the popularity of emerging to improve the Cambodian People's Party with that lovely um, uh, either like British Union of Fascists or um, <laughs> another funny thing is that that's the oh and the the communists won the election in Singapore. Uh, but yeah, like um, that that symbol is the symbol of the People's Action Party, like the symbol over here of the Cambodian People's Party. It's a symbol of the, the People's Action Party in Singapore, which in this one is a democratic conservative. Which they sort of co-opted for like the autocracy, I think. Um, well, some countries with autocracy, they have that, or maybe... Maybe like the... the, the... Nah. Yeah, yeah, autocracy, right. I was thinking reactionaries. Some countries have autocracy, like, parties that have that symbol. Like, uh, for example, if we look at Kazakhstan... It's uh, Nur Otan with autocracy and that symbol. I don't know. I think it's, I, just, I think it looks pretty cool, but at the same time, it's hilarious because you know it used to be the symbol of like the British fascists and then some random dude in Singapore. You know, Lee Kuan Yew is like, eh, whatever. Let me have that. Anyway, we're gonna do an attempt coup. So, fifty-four percent of successful coup and a thirty percent of uh, the emerging outlooks uh, starting a civil war. But considering, yep. The Cambodian People's Party has enacted the coup, and now Cambodia is Chinese, and the communists are involved now. So basically, we have just uh, we've just seriously derped 
all over the, the, the Cambodians. Uh, I'm not sure if we've already like shown off this event in this particular playthrough. Uh, the dramatic scenes as regime change sweeps Cambodia. After a period with uptick in foreign intelligence activity, especially from China, the previous government of Cambodia have been toppled, uh, with many top officials of the former regime that they detained. Rifisak Soon of the Communists has emerged as the new leader amid the turmoil, uh, and he's uh, also um, generic, XD. Early indications are that the new regime of Cambodia will identify with the emerging outlook, uprooting the balance of power. So. Here we go. Um, Democratic Kampuchea 2.0. That's sort of, can can you um, tag CBD? Can you switch to Democratic Kampuchea? Which would be hilarious. Like it's not realistic, but it would be hilarious. Oh, really now? No flag change for Cambodia. That's unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. Extremely unfortunate, in fact. Oh well, that that, that, that is very fine. Uh, interesting. <laughs> so now the Shanghai Pact has expanded. Uh, basically, we, we just need uh, Vietnam and Laos to really uh, make uh, this part of the world look pretty cool. And Kachin State as well. Uh, which is gonna happen if the Myanmarese take these guys over. And we have also a ton of, influ a ton of influence on Myanmar, which we're gonna need to sort of keep up. Uh, just in case, you know, turning them into a puppet becomes uh, useful. Like, if we, if we coup them and it succeeds, uh, it's no problem, because um, obviously they're our ally. But if uh, we coup them and fail, that's, that would be very, very pro problematic, because, you know, we're, right now we're allied. And uh, just to get them as a puppet, I'm not sure if it's worth to have a like, chance of us losing an ally. But anyway, um, Southeast Asian adventures aside, I am improving relations with the Taiwanese quite a bit. Uh, so we get 107, um, 107 relations with them, which is obviously quite uh, cool, yo. Uh, in fact, why am I... Um, I think I'm... No, I'm not boosting anymore, right? I don't think I'm boosting uh, those guys anymore. Huh. Indonesian election. The Democratic Party of Struggle Emerging Outlook. Oh, nice. Nice, 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 nice. That is pretty good. Pretty good for us. Yeah, we have all these aggression packs, or non-aggression packs. I guarantee Korea DPR and Pakistan. You know, I should probably guarantee Venezuela too. Can I? Um... Quest Where the hell is guarantee? Oh, here. Ah, we need world tension to be at 20%. Alright, that's fine. That is very, very fine Reno. And the reason why I am doing some more Taiwan is that I am going for the free links. And um, that's um, that's gonna lead us to the cross strait service trade agreement, and then to the Rome map to reunification. Now, what can happen there is uh, either the the KMT, the Pan Blue Coalition, coalition accept, in which case uh, the ROC has proclaimed uh, peaceful existence, and we can uh, or peaceful coexistence, and we can go down this path, and eventually. Uh, establish the special administrative region if we have more than 50% Chinese influence. And uh, if the total support for the Pan-Greens is less than 25%, which it right now currently is, and if the ruling party is the Pan-Blue Coalition, which it currently is, and then we can proclaim a new united front and make them join the Shanghai Pact. So now, th now they'd be our puppet, our SAR, uh, just like Hong Kong over here. As you can see, this is our puppet list, which is going to be quite cool. You know, uh, we have Cambodia as a satellite, Wa State as a satellite, and SAR Hong Kong. Uh, we're gonna gain SAR Taiwan. And after we gain SAR Taiwan, um, we're gonna work on uh, doing a bunch of influence. Wait. Oh, now we can see like the, the skirmishes that are happening between, um, between Burma and all their little subjects. Or, well, the people that they would like to be their subjects, but aren't exactly that big of a fan of being their subject. I wonder if I could help the, the Burmese in any way in improving their their influence. But could I attack my own influence?
Like, I could target India. That's gonna reduce the Indian influence in Kachin State, and it's also going to reduce my influence very, very slightly. And that should send Myanmar over to top. Now, I don't think the AI uses the puppet mechanic. Oh, they can't even because uh, it's a nationalist versus uh, non-aligned. Crap. And they don't have any elections. We cannot stage a coup, right? Yeah. We cannot stage a coup. So I'd need to tag switch to Myanmar, make a coup in uh, Kachin State, and then manually uh, puppet them. Like, sometimes they do puppet, but, some or, but most of the times they just ignore the possibility of uh, puppeting. Like, for example, if we take a look at Eritrea right now... Oh, actually... Actually, they're at 78%, but like usually Egypt goes over 80% influence pretty quickly, and then they don't puppet, which is a big, big sad. So what I do when I play the Millennium Dawn is that every once in a while I just like check which countries, like, um, which countries have uh, like very, very high influence of someone, and uh, if... Uh, if that is applicable, I puppet them. See, like, for example, fucking Belarus over here. Like, the Russian Federation has 91% in Belarus. Like, by the game's own mechanic... Or by the game's own mechanics, I could just go here, tag over to Russia, turn Belarus into a puppet, and there goes <laughs> there goes Lukashenko. Uh, now we have Fyodor Sitko, who I'm pretty sure is just some random dude. Um, that's kind of sad that we lost Lukashenko, but... You know... Um, the, the AI wasn't doing that, which is weird because, see, you, you'd think. Also, what the fuck? Oh, it looks like when you, when you puppet people, it just removes a leader. Because it's still Lukashenko aut autocracy um, party, because it's the same, like, uh, ideology or maybe outlook? No, 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 it's the same, like, ideology. Um, because they're both reactionaries, uh, as Putin. But yeah, the world is being pretty peaceful, um, except for, you know, <laughs> the weird stuff that we're doing, uh, like setting up puppet regimes. And uh, people are pretty angry about that. Um, now, we also have enough um, planes now to, to fill up our uh, carriers, which is a pretty good thing. We have also researched... Um, where is it? We have also researched the Type 001 Liaoning... Uh, ship class, so now we can uh, build those. So we're improving our aircraft carrier fleet. Bangladesh applies to join SCO. Because they're emerging. Yo, have you just noticed how similar these two women look? Like, I know it's just me being racist and like, oh, these Asian people look the same and also they're wearing the same thing, thus they're the same person. But they look suspiciously fucking similar. Hmm... Anyway, uh, maybe Indonesia, now that they're emerging, are going to want to join. Wait, we have an election? <laughs> I hadn't even realized that we were going to have our own elections. Anyway, like, we have been doing a pretty damn fine job when it comes to peacefully expanding, I guess. Hmm. Got new multi-role fighters. Could I guess, uh, yeah, focus on that a little bit. I'm not even sure. Mm, I really shouldn't be building these uh, fourth gen strike fighters because they're not that good. But whatever. Whatever we know. Um, yeah, we, the the only problem that we have right now in the equipment situation is the is the IFV. Anyway, we have. Uh, we have a glorious uh, campaign, and everyone is helping us because they love us. They love us so much. They're all enthusiastic. Very nice. The problem is uh, the Communist Party right now is 26%. Well, what did they get the last time? 29% and it was still pretty difficult. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to... Hmm. Non-aligned Western Outlook. I feel like the Western Outlook is the biggest problem. Because a lot of these countries are just, or these countries, these parties are pretty annoying. Like, we're never going to get the Federation for Democratic China in there. 
So let's fuck them off. Also, uh, we have um, we have instituted a higher election threshold. So like now, for example, the Democracy Party of China is not going to have a say in anything. Or the Union of Chinese Nationalists is 5%. And um, yeah, that should allow us to... Um, uh, I think I remember that like uh, the Democratic League and the, the Revolutionary Committee of the Chinese Guomandang don't really like each other. So maybe we should attack the China Democratic League too. But anyway, the, the China Association for, for Promoting Democracy is pretty cool. They're not gonna go over the CCP. And combined, we're gonna have like 50%, or sorry, not 50%, so like 49%. And, uh, whoa, the PLA has 17%. So yeah, we should be able to go uh, over the 50% limit with the current uh, setup pretty easily. So this coalition should be good enough to stay, but just, just to be sure... Um, you know, there could be like a a possibility of a CCP PLA coalition. So let's let's uh, the Qing are actually already uh, over under. All right, attack the China Democratic League to hurt them a little bit. So yeah, we're gonna need to do some weird political juggling. Some weird weird political juggling. Anyway, uh, any other things? Oh yeah, right, uh, Afghanistan is, uh, thanks to our like military support, the Northern Alliance is uh, starting to go on the offensive a little bit. Uh, but, I mean, until we can like actually send people there, I don't think that that's gonna be... I don't think that that's gonna be um, good enough to like defeat the Taliban. Tsang Ching Hong's coalition re-elected. There we go. With all the votes counted, the Chinese voters have decided to give Tsang Ching Hong and the Communist Party another term. The current ruling parties have gotten a majority in the new parliament and can extend their mandate to rule together in the new period. Thus, Tsang Ching Hong can look forward to ruling China. Or we could form a new government. But for now, let's, let's just keep it this way because, yeah. See, like, uh, getting the new... Um, hmm, this might actually boost us, right? I think it, it there's some kind of uh, there's some kind of mechanic that boosts your ruling party if uh, if the coalition is uh, elected. I don't know. Um, other than that, though, we could try at some point to make a PLA CCP coalition, which would be quite uh, meme. -y. Let's just say that, because the PLA technically is supposed to be... See, I'm not even sure how people can vote for the PLA, <laughs> because the PLA in real life is uh, a party army. Like, they're, they're not the army of uh, the People's Republic of China. They are the army of the Communist Party. And this is represented in, uh, in uh, Millennium Dawn by this party before country uh, national spirit over here. And that up there is like the symbol of the PLA. You can see there's like two weird ass Chinese symbols. That is, that is A to 1. Um, because 1st of August is like the first... Um, is like the date of the founding of the PLA. So you, you'll see that those two symbols pretty much everywhere. The PLA has uh, like, you know, symbols. <laughs> you'll always see Ba Yi, Ba Yi, which is A to 1, A to 1. And as you can see, that gives us some uh, military malices in... Uh, exchange for a lot of emerging support. So honestly, like I think that keeping that would be quite quite good. Um, like um, if you go down and you get Xi Jinping at the end of the tree, you can depoliticize the military. Although I, yeah, maybe even Bossy like can do that. Um, you can do that at the end, but um, you know. Right now, it is no priority of ours. Alright. 20 fucking factories on IFVs. Maybe we're gonna be able to fill up our entire army with IFVs at some point. Oh, there we go. Cross-service trade agreement. Where is it? Man, this focus tree is so good. 
There we go. Propose a roadmap to your reunification, and uh, I'll see you all when that is um, when that is finished. There we are. Reports indicate that Sung Ching Hong's government has offered its Taipei-based counterpart a roadmap to reunification, mapping out a path for Taiwan to eventually return to Chinese control as a special administrative region. This proposal includes multiple safeguards for the continuation of Taiwanese democracy and political autonomy, but this may not be enough for Taiwanese opponents and to reunification with the mainland. How China would respond if this plan is rejected by the Taiwanese authorities remains uncertain. Well, let's see how uh, quickly we can get a response on that. And, oh, they accepted. Very good. Peaceful coexistence. Oh, baby, 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 baby. Interesting things are about to happen. Um, let's make a destroyer or two. Um, even though I'm... These are old-ass destroyers, Russian, like, fucking copies that we've acquired. Uh, we're gonna need to get better ones. Oh, actually we have the Luhu domestic DDG-75, so I don't even know why the Sabria menu over there is available. Uh, change you over to a Luhu. But yes, Taiwan rejoining Great China would be pretty cool. Would be pretty cool. The roadmap has been ejected, uh, accepted. Taipei has agreed to make a joint statement committing their side and ours to eventual reunification. Rejoice! Very good. So, uh, the KMT have officially redeemed themselves in the eyes of the Chinese people. Or whatever. They did probably, like, say something like that and be like, despite the past crimes of Chiang Kai-shek or whatever, uh, now it's time to move forward, blah, blah, blah. Um, now basically the way, we, the way we made this is that we just uh, spammed a bunch of uh, investments. So as you can see, plus 100 relations thanks to construction projects. And... Um, well, um, yeah, we're gonna need to have more than 50% Chinese influence now, which is why I'm actually heavily uh, moving against the United States. Because the USA has a lot of influence in Taiwan, obviously, with the Islamic Republic of Iran. So what I'm doing basically a lot is this. I just go in there and say, target other influence and target the American influence. Um, and eventually I'm gonna need to start hitting uh, Taiwan's independence because actually they have a lot of independence from uh, foreign influence. So one, once I overtake the USA influence, I'm gonna need to start working on the Taiwanese independence. And it's really hard to get influence on Taiwan as China probably because uh, they have a um, higher GDP per capita, of course, than PRC. So I can't use my money. I have to use my political power, which is obviously a bit of a big, uh, big problem over there. A bit of a big problemo because, um, you know, um, I don't have that much political power to go around and I would like to use it for many things um, but yeah basically um, basically now I'm gonna be moving towards the administrative uh, special administrative region and uh, yeah really nothing else now um, yeah, we don't actually get any Chinese influence for these things we actually get Chinese influence though from, from uh, free trade zone and technology sharing but it's only 10 so it's like you know not that much if we if we spread influence we get 16 so with two focuses we get less influence than uh, with 100 political power or well we get slightly more than with 100 political power anyway i think that that's gonna be enough for today uh, i'm gonna continue playing and uh, start a new video session thing once um once we are in interesting moments, but for now, that is going to be enough. So thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this great China, and I'll see you soon.